is uh, designed by Orange. Uh, Orange is a service operator in UK. What they do is, if you wear this, this boot, uh, if you walk around, you, the heat of your of your feet will generate electricity, which will then charge the battery. Yeah. So there are many ways of solving this kind of problems, uh, but we want the battery to last uh, longer. Portability is also another problem uh, because we don't want to carry a brick to everywhere we go. We just want a mobile device that is small. It's portable, but well, should the phone be very small? Yeah, just like the, um, the picture on the side, if it is too small, then you can't even punch the key, then there's no point. And in fact, uh, since iPhone has launched, uh, this trend is now reversed. Because in the past, uh, the trend is to make the mobile device as small as possible, or as small as feasible. But then when iPhone comes up, uh, suddenly the screen becomes bigger because we want to have better user experience. So now everyone is, is carrying a slab of mobile phone instead of a very small device. Of course, there are many other challenges, but these are the key challenges for wireless comms. So um, to communicate in wireless, we have to overcome all these problems. This is a, a general block diagram of a typical wireless comms systems. Um, when the data comes in, assuming the data is digital, it will first uh, go through the channel encoder. So we we'll encode the data to provide extra protection. Then we will modulate the data we have uh, a baseband modulator that will modulate the signal. And for wireless communication, we also have a transmit diversity or power control. I'll come to that very later on, but this part is very important for wireless comms. And multiple access, which allows multiple users to access a channel at the same time. Um, after all this, we will go through the RF transmission, where because the signal at that time is still in the baseband, we have to modulate it to the passband, which is the bandwidth that you are allowed to transmit. Also, the signal processing before the RF transmission is very weak, the power is very weak, but if you need to transmit uh, to the wireless channel, you have to pump up the power. So there will be a power amplifier over there. At the receiver side, it's basically doing everything in the reverse way. We have the RF reception, uh, we also have diversity combining, user separation because we have multiple users, we have to separate the users, and then we need to have equalizers and demodulators, and of course at the end we need to decode the data. This is a typical uh, wireless communication transceiver block diagram. If you look at a bigger picture, if you look at the mobile network, the mobile network can be divided into uh, this, well, mainly these three parts. We have the user equipment, what we call the UE. The user equipment is mainly the mobile transceiver, uh, which also con con uh, consists of a SIM card, basically your portable device, that's the user equipment. Connecting to the user equipment, uh, there's the radio SS network. Uh, in terms of 3G, uh, the, divide, well, the equipment is called Node B, that's the base station, and in terms of um, the next generation, the LTE, they call it E-Node B. The radio SS network, of course, consists of the base station and the base transceiver uh, systems, and what it mainly does is radio resource management, because the spectrum is so expensive and is so scarce, so it has to manage the resource properly. The radio SS network will then connect to the core network where the core network will perform all the user validation, switching, routing, queuing, etc., which will connect to the existing network, such as the PSTN, or maybe the internet, or maybe to another service provider. So I've described the, the basic fundamental uh, block diagram of a wireless uh, communication systems. However, something that we have to know for sure is the wireless channel. Because if we don't know the channel, how are we going to design a system such that it will work over this channel? So there are channel models, and the most generic categorization of the channel models are uh, as the following. We categorize the channels into three parts. The first part is path loss. 
Path loss is to model the signal attenuation in large transmitter to receiver separation. Because if we have a base station somewhere, and if you are very far away, you want to know how will the signal attenuate over this long distance. Because you know if you propagate the signal through a longer distance, then it will, will you need a higher power. So, so for example, if I don't have this well, internet link at the moment, yeah, if I want to shout myself very, very loud, such that you guys in Pakistan can hear, I have to shout really, really loud yeah, so for my signal to propagate through the atmosphere to reach you. Of course, it's not, that's not feasible. Path loss is to categorize uh, this kind of attenuation. It's caused by the wave propagation through space. Another uh, level of modeling is shadowing. Shadowing is to describe the behavior of the signal at different locations. So assuming uh, you are at the same transmitter to receiver distance, if you walk around in a circle, because if you walk around in a circle, what happens is that the, your, or your distance from the transmitter is the same. However, if you walk around in a circle, you'll find that you will end up in different locations. Sometimes you may be in outdoor, sometimes you might be indoor. And also, sometimes you might have a building blocking the line of sight. Sometimes you might have a building at the back of you, such that it will provide an extra reflection, such that it will improve the signal. So shadowing is to describe this kind of random behavior when you are at a certain, certain distance, but you are at different locations. The last level of modeling is multipath fading. Multipath fading is to model the rapid variation within a very short distance. Because what happens, well, just like the example that I have uh, in Old Trafford, because it receives multiple reflections uh, and multiple paths arriving at the same time, what will happen is that those paths will arrive at different phase. I suppose when you study physics, you will, learn, you will know that if there are multiple paths arriving, if, or if there are multiple signals, if they arrive at different phase, we could end up with constructive or destructive interference. Yeah? This is the same phenomenon for multipath fading, because when we receive multiple paths, some of the paths will be constructive,